morning to all my friends from Britain and a very good afternoon to all listeners from India and greetings of the day for all the listeners from the rest of the world. Today I'm going to speak to you about a simple modification of ovular plate arthroplasty which perhaps could give better outcome in certain difficult situations and I proudly represent ISSH as secretary. So uh, whenever we discuss uh, PIP joint factor dislocation, this is one diagram which universally appears in every text, every uh, diagram, every presentation. What is universally depicted is that the actual force acting because of the extensor and the flexor causes a push-off fracture of the ulnar lip of the middle phalanx, the P2, and that leads to a dorsal fracture dislocation. In fact, AO surgery reference goes on to say that uh, it's, the, it's a hyperextension force at the PIP joint which causes the fracture and a subsequent dislocation. Even the most coveted text on this topic, uh, that by Eaton, uh, the, the first description of OLR plate arthroplasty does not talk much about the mechanism of these injuries. And I believe they still are poorly understood. There is a very frequent occurrence of the DIP joint and a PIP joint injuries. And in this text, this is one of the texts which describes the mechanism of injury in great details. So it usually is an actual force acting at the tip of the finger, depending upon the attitude of the DIP joint or the PIP joint, you get different fracture patterns. What is relevant in the diagram that we have all, always been relating to this injury? Let's go take a little more detailed look at this. You have this uh, sagittal section of the PIP joint. The one marked in blue is your volar plate and the, the one marked in gray are your extensor and the flexor tendons. To schematically represent, this is what we are looking at. Now, if you look carefully, the FDS attachment and the central slip attachment they are not at the same level in, the, in, in P2 because the FDS is attached far more distally. The torque couple that this creates, these two eccentrically acting forces create, lies somewhere away from the articular cartilage, about four to five millimeters away from the base of P2. And therefore, when the fracture of the volar lip happens, whatever be the mechanism, whether it is an actual force or whether it is, an, it is a forceful flexion of the FDS itself, the moment the volar restraint is gone, which was actually uh, preventing this force couple from subluxating the joint, the moment that restraint is gone, now you have a fracture which, is, which presents uh, complicates as a dislocation. Therefore, very logically, the moment we put this piece back by whichever means and fix it securely in that position, that should take care of the stability of the joint and give us a congruous joint. To achieve that, we have simple options like fixation. Here is an example of a good fixation. Or you have a hemi-hamet arthroplasty where the defect in the P2 base is reconstructed using a hamet graft. And third, of, of course, the one which we are going to discuss is the volar plate arthroplasty. When it comes to volar plate arthroplasty, this simplistic diagram actually misleads us. It's, it's, it's not a, as easy as it looks in this diagram. Volar plate arthroplasty fre frequently, it, it requires more flexion for stability as compared to what would be achieved after a, for a conservative treatment or for of fracture fixation or after hemiamet arthroplasty. Also, invariably, we could be dealing with neglected fractures, and there the volar plate is frequently contracted. Plain x rays are quite poor in depicting the actual size of the defect. And in most parts of India, and I believe it would be true for many parts of the world, getting ideal screw sets, one millimeter, 1.3 millimeter profile 
or hemiamate arthroplasty or even for primary fixation is still difficult and therefore volar plate arthroplasty does remain a good choice AO surgery reference also mentions that when you do volar plate arthroplasty if the volar plate is not inserted right at the base of the middle phalanx it could actually allow the fds to still effect a dislocation this is much easier said than done getting a volar plate right at the base with adequate length is not easy i started doing this a simple modification where along with the volar plate i would also take the fds and simply pull it into the defect by doing this i found that the joint remain quite stable in this situation and even if my volar plate could not be very effectively pulled into the defect or it was contracted or it was not ideally placed at the base this would still give a very congruous joint this was 3 months old injury and we did exactly this procedure this extension block wiring to much this definitely uh, affects early early flexion mobilization but i think it it when when we are dealing with a situation where we want some uh, predictable soft tissue healing to occur in this area uh, this may be necessary we also start early fdp active motion extension block wire is removed at 4 weeks and pull out sutures are removed at 6 weeks fifth week onwards beginning of fifth week onwards assisted flexion of the pip joint is started whatever flexion deformity develops is a lot, is not stretched out until 12 weeks at the end of it this is the kind of result that we could expect and for a neglected pip joint fracture dislocation this is a very uh, satisfactory outcome so we are hypothesize that recessing the fds anchor may lead to a better outcome in situations where volar plate arthroplasty is performed for extended indication we have so far operated six digits all of them neglected dorsal dislocations of more than 3 months duration all have had near full range of motion with no late subluxation and perhaps with a longer follow up we will test this hypothesis what this all hypothesis also needs to be subjected to is a good biomechanical study in the lab i thank you for your patient listening and i take this opportunity to invite you to holy city of mahabalipuram on 6th 7th and 8th of august that's when the annual conference of issh will happen beautiful place it's a coastal city on east coast of india and there there will be ample opportunity to socialize with social distancing and our guest society bssh promises to add to the academic flavor all of you are welcome uh, you can check on the website of issh as well as Sky, website of ishcon 2021 for for the details thank you very much mm-hmm.